So moving on. Yeah, this is a. Uh, I really, really like this level. I am. I, is this your favorite? The, Jobo the amount, was your second favorite. No, this favorite? is not my favorite. This, this. I'm very proud of it, but uh, this is not my favorite. The, there's another one coming up. When we get there, I'll point it out. But uh, yeah, I. This one turned out super well. Uh, in terms of me actually starting to figure out what I was doing. This is the level where it probably really started to happen, and I really started to uh, not be an idiot so much. <laughs> I remember this. Uh, I remember this very well, like uh, playing this level and le just really enjoying this level. Well, this one was a, a, a weird one because um, Colin and I really vibed in terms of that sounds lame, but Colin and I, like Colin, was great for me to work with because he was very receptive to letting me throw out my ridiculous ideas and uh you know he would he would be he would say yes to a lot of things and then when it didn't work he would just go in and change it behind my back and make it better <laughs> and you know that's just how it worked out fairly well and that he would he would make me feel listened to but still make sure that I didn't do stupid things all the time <laughs> That's a good way to go. And he created a lot of good busy work for me to not screw up the level too much, which is also pretty good. Things like the rock, paper, scissors or whatever. I mean, when I'm busy doing that kind of stuff, how badly could I screw up the very important thing? That's true. Like, you know, making the combat unbeatably difficult. Yeah, exactly. I think your levels in general were the hardest levels in the game. They were fairly difficult. And it was because you, you would just not let people come in and make them easier. I mean, like, like for example, our screaming fit that we had together about the, the tear guys in Ratchet Three. I, s I still don't remember that. Yeah. Okay. No, not at all. Well, maybe when we, maybe when you see it, uh, in the, you know, in the distant future when we do that, assuming that we don't give up on these as a lost cause. You know what would be funny though, if by the time this episode airs, like we got slash dotted, and <laughs> we're all of a sudden super important, and it's just like, yeah, maybe if these catch on. Sorry. I didn't mean to make your shit look bad. I was just trying to make your shit look bad. Yeah. By standing in a corner. Oh, look, more armor. A hundred thousand bolts. Not gonna buy that. Oh, look, there's a close-up of your clock right here. Oh, okay, so here we get to some more uh, ridiculous gameplay. Let me just refill. Uh, you, feel free to intro the, the section. Yeah, this was... Uh, I don't quite recall whether we did this magnet boot section or the arena magnet boot section first. But this is where we started to say, hey, Ratchet can walk on walls. Why not the enemies? Why and, not uh, indeed? Why not? And uh, so we gave it a shot and saw what happened. And it was a lot of work. So much work. I really like this bit. Like this is a cool way to do the cover. Yeah, you I have these edges that come out, and the cover, the the ledges turn into your cover, and that's, yeah, it's very clever. I I always liked this because it made me think of the Adam West Batman show, Cause, you know, like when they would climb up the, when right, they would fake right, climb right, right. up the, and the windows would open, and it's, and like a guest star would come in and talk to him. Oh, right, dude, so running on a spiral, running on the 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 magnet boots, running on the spiral, uh, so much work went into making them stand and actually be able to do this spiral stuff. And and, we, uh, we don't actually have magnet uh, weapon shots on these, do we? Yeah, they're, no. not, they're not curving correctly. Um, this was another one of those things where in the Insomniac Museum, uh, there was there's a little section about the magnet boot spheres that were too small or whatever. Right. This is the section where they were in. Like right here in this in this combat setup is where we had the magnet boot. Oh, in this spheres. little garden? Yeah. And this is where we took them out because they didn't work at all. I mean, because this is where we were starting this is where like magnet boots everywhere in this part. <laughs> and that's where we tried the, the magnet boot spheres. Well, because we finally let you use the weapons and uh, right. a lot of the stuff that we didn't let you do in Ratchet 1 because it was just too hard for sort of a one-off gadget. Well, in Ratchet 1, you also... this is like In Ratchet 1, you also had the uh, very slow walking on the magnitude surfaces. Yep. And in this game, we were like, no, screw that. Normal speed, just go on magnitude surfaces. Which was a smart move because it let us start doing these kind of combat setups. 
no, that we couldn't really do in Ratchet 1. Were we the first people to do like crazy gravity stuff like that, or was there another game before us? Um, I wouldn't want to say that we're the first, but I, because I, I don't, def I don't recall playing it. Yeah, uh, and I, I don't remember ever looking at a game for inspiration on how to do those. We just sort of did a lot of experimentation. I mean, you look at uh, Legend of Zelda, and they and the Water Temple had a lot of those weird standing upside down kind of stuff in, Le in Ocarina of Time on the Nintendo 64. It did. Uh, yeah, you you totally flip upside down and do that kind of stuff in Ocarina of Time. I, you might be thinking of Twilight Princess. I don't think so, but maybe. Uh, you know more about Zelda than I do. If you say it's Twilight Princess, then maybe it's Twilight Princess. But I'm pretty sure one of the N64 games had some some gravity stuff. Look at those guys running. Look, perfectly running along that surface. Don't quite turn to face you properly, but they sure ran across that surface fine. And uh, tell, tell them why... Uh... These guys, when they get hit once, they fall off the, the rail. Because when when you hit enemies in Ratchet and Clank, they're supposed to knock backwards and you know play a hit reaction or whatever. Doing knockback hit reactions on magna boot surfaces was a challenge that I was unwilling to do. <laughs> so you hit them, and then they fall, and then they die. And that's the end of it, as far as I was concerned. It was enough trouble to make them walk and turn and shoot... I was not about to handle hit reactions. So the reason they do that is because I'm lazy and I'm afraid of hard work. <laughs> well, at least you're honest. And the, the combat in this level is really frantic. Oh yeah, and and uh, this besides that, that one level we pointed out, the facility, this is another level that is very frequently pointed out as, as one of the first times we really started to understand what combat was in Ratchet. And kudos to Colin, man, because he he was doing a ton of experimentation with cover and yeah. like really sort of breaking new Ratchet ground. And it was it was all stuff that, that probably wouldn't have get done if it wasn't for him. Yeah, he really stepped it up in terms of, uh, you know, the pace of the way that these guys come out, the way they're introduced. Uh, I think it, it's it's really good one of my favorites and uh, another sort of silent uh, improvement that this game had over ratchet one is the effects like the all of the weapon effects i think made a mm -hmm. huge leap uh during this game that's a mean place to put an enemy well you kind of you get cover like that yeah but they're kind of blocked from your view a little bit i really like that blue effect it really is probably my favorite effect that i do But yeah, uh, you know what? It's one of the, uh, when I talk about this level and how proud I am of it, I don't want to. I don't mean it in like I'm proud of all the work that I've done so much. And that I feel very lucky to have been given the opportunity to work on this level because it was such. It's a gr it's a great looking level for one. Lloyd did a great job in the way it looks. Totally, it's very distinctive and it looks very good. Colin had a, a great design and a lot of interesting experiments. So most of the ideas went credit to other people. And it was really just a great learning experience and a great honor to be like, you know what, You're, we're going to give you all this stuff to try out and just run with it. And that helped me learn a lot in terms of just being like, you know what, if this, if they want to experiment with these kind of things, I'll just run with it and then maybe it works, maybe it doesn't work. And we just got lucky that a lot of it did work. Totally. And it turned out very well. And sort of set the standard for what, what Ratchet's combat was, was capable of. For all the hatred and bugs I see in the other levels I did, I don't, in this level, I'm, I'm actually quite proud and quite happy with the way that it turned out.